Well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Donathan Brown, Assistant Provost and Assistant Vice President for Faculty Diversity and Recruitment here at the Rochester Institute of Technology. Thank you very much for joining me for our inaugural Fireside Chat Series. These conversations with some of our star faculty are designed to provide you with a behind the scenes glimpse into life as a faculty member here at RIT, life as a community member within the greater Rochester area, along with providing you useful insight and advice. Uh, today I'm joined by one of our star faculty members from the College of Art and Design, Dr. Ricky Figueroa. So without further delay, let us begin. First and foremost, Dr. Figueroa, thank you so very much for joining us today. I sincerely appreciate it. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Didn't know this was the inaugural one, so pressure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. No pressure whatsoever. Uh, so, so let's begin with you telling us a little bit about yourself, such as where you attended school, um, your areas of expertise, and your research interest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so good morning, everybody. Um, so uh, I'm originally from Puerto Rico, grew up in Spain, moved back to Puerto Rico, and I went to school at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayaguez, the engineering school. Uh, I'm in the College of Art and Design. I'm an electrical engineer by training. So I did my bachelor's and my master's in electrical engineering um, in Puerto Rico. And then I just, fi uh, just finished my PhD at RIT. Um, so uh, my areas of expertise are actually, I focus in, in imaging, imaging science, um, especially applied to the motion picture industry. So everything that has to do with movie making and, and uh, projection systems, camera systems, uh, and things like that. And I, my latest research has been in, in kind of like trying to use a lot of the digital data that is collected um, kind of during you know, filming or during recording any video and trying to extract information about the systems that were used to create those images. So that's in a nutshell, kind of like what I've been doing. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. I think if nothing else, one, one accolade of coming to RIT to begin with is to meet you and perhaps be in a commercial. You can make folks famous, if you will, <laughs> given that background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fantastic. I, I think that was a great intro and a great opening for folks to get a better understanding of who you are, particularly looking at your area of expertise and research. Um, one of the goals of our conversation, obviously, is to talk about the balance of living in the greater Rochester community in addition to working at RIT. So next, this next question will be about the community itself. Um, as you know, the greater Rochester community is a dynamic place to live. Um, can you share with us some of the people, places, or events that you enjoy the most? So yeah, I think um, you know what attracted me to Rochester, um, I can probably divide it up into, into two or three different areas. Kind of like professionally, it was you know, uh, the image capital of the world for many, many years, right? The imaging capital of the world with you know, right. companies like Kodak, Xerox, Bausch & Lomb, the Imaging Science School at RIT, so on and so forth. So it was kind of like a place that I knew I was going to be able to learn a lot about, you know, my uh, um, professional interests. Um, from the personal point of view, I am, um, uh, I've been an athlete throughout my life. I played uh, sports in college. I played uh, uh, soccer in college due to kind of like having grown in Spain. And um, I've been doing also triathlons for a long time. And I think this area, this whole area is just perfect for, you know, outdoor events and outdoor uh, living. So I do enjoy that a lot, uh, uh, being able to bike around, cycle around here, run. Um, uh, you know, the Finger Lakes are, are great and Lake Ontario and everything. So, you know, from a personal point of view, I enjoy a lot going outside and, and spending time exercising. And I think Rochester offers, you know, 10 months out of the year that you can do that very <laughs> a lot, right? So January and February, you know, we do treadmills and things like that. But it's for the most part, it's, it's really enjoyable, right? Uh, the weather in Rochester is really nice. And I do enjoy this, the heat that we have right now. And then, um, I think that another thing that we do enjoy that maybe people don't know much about, I think uh, my family and I consider Rochester to be a foodie town, right? So there are mm. a lot of very good restaurants, a lot of very good uh, food culture, like and, and, and breweries and things like that, that, it, 
that you, know, you visit downtown. We since we moved here many years ago, 21 years ago. You know, we we enjoy going to downtown and enjoying you know the the restaurants downtown and around their city and everything. So I think those three things kind of like are are things that for me were important in in uh, moving to this area and enjoying you know finding that balance of work um, at our IT um, and uh, and then in, you know in your personal life too. Wow, I, I think that's a very expansive response. Uh, and, and so I'm waiting for you to tell everyone that you work for the tourism board on the side. Right? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm listening. Oh, yeah. That, is that what you guys wanted? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is good. This is good. I mean, one of the things is, of course, that RIT is not just a dynamic place to work, but the greater Rochester community is a dynamic place to live. And so I think your response really encapsulates all you can do throughout the year and not just within the summer months. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, let's talk words of advice now. Um, looking back to where you began your academic journey to where you are now, um, can you share with us one piece of advice for those who are on the academic job market or who soon will be on the academic job market? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think, um, and this is probably an advice that, that applies to that and applies also to anybody in the job market. And, and at least it has... Uh, uh, it has served me well. And it, it sounds maybe like maybe too generic or, or like, oh, yeah, I've heard that before, but I, I value it and I think it's very important, which is, you know, to be very honest about who you are when you're presenting yourself and interviewing and about your situation. And, you know, people hire people. It's not uh, in my in my experience, you know, people are going to hire people and they want to meet and understand who that person is. Uh, of course, you got to have the, 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 the qualifications and things like that. But um, I find that sometimes that, uh, especially when you're starting the job search or starting to uh, uh, interview, people tend to be maybe tense or like, oh, I got to be perfect and this is who I am and don't talk about your personal life or don't talk about... Right. And it's like, relax, you know, uh, be honest about who you are, the things you like, um, because that's what makes connections. That's what makes connections. And that's what uh, the person that is interviewing you or the people that are interviewing you, what they will remember is not so much necessarily the, the, the qualifications. They can read that on a document. It's like how that person uh, uh, related to others, how they, they spoke and, and, you know, those little bits and pieces of information about their life and their interests. So I think that that's very important. It's like just come across as who you are and, and it, yeah. it will surprise you how, how far it takes you. Yeah, no, well said, well said. And as you mentioned, I think those words of advice can apply broadly from the academic community and those who are not within the academic community. So thank you very much for that. Um, as we think about this, uh, and obviously we know that we're talking to prospective faculty members, uh, considering RIT is their home. Can you share with us two things that you truly enjoy about being a member of the RIT family? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think um, for me professionally, first thing is, is that uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, RIT is one of the pillars around the world when it comes to imaging, right? And, um, you know, kind of like maybe a little bit selfishly, right? I, I feel like I'm working at a place that where all the breakthrough things about imaging related technology are happening. So that is one of the greatest things. Uh, and, and on top of that then, is we read about this and, and you might see it on, on some, uh, you know, marketing pieces or things like that, but it truly, RIT truly, truly is um, a merger of creativity and technology. And, um, you know, you come to RIT, you are exposed constantly to, you know, latest technological, you know, uh, 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 research and things like that. But there's also this very, very strong creative culture, right? And and you know we sit in the middle of that, and and uh, um, you, you get to um, what's the word I'm looking for? You get to feed your brain both both things, right? And and for the program that I'm a part of, 
uh, motion picture science, right? We sit in that middle. We are in the College of Art and Design, in the School of Film and Animation, learning and teaching our students about the all the technical concepts um, that are necessary to understand how, you know, how motion picture and television systems work. But it's all within the context of this uh, creative industry that is, you know, creating movies or animation or 3D animation. And, um, you know, RIT, uh, uh, you know, every couple of years, there's something new coming up, right? Now, our Magic Center is, you know, one of the, the unique places in the Northeast to do uh, imaging research, animation research, gaming research, and also expose our students to uh, an environment that is second to none and equally impressive and, and capable as any post-production systems that you can, or post-production um, um, uh, places that you can go uh, in the West Coast or in the East Coast in New York or anything like that. So those are the two things. I think it's for me, selfishly, you know, it's imaging and, and everything that happens about imaging. And the other one is just all the intersections that exist uh, with creative uh, uh, disciplines and technical disciplines. So. Yeah, no, those are all great things to highlight, I think, as we continue to talk to more and more faculty, prospective faculty members who are interdisciplinary. I think the thoughts and insight you just provided really provides a pathway for individuals to see themselves working across colleges, across disciplines, and across silos, if you will, uh, to really create something really magical here at RIT. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the insight. Um, needless to say, you've highlighted all good things. So thank you very much for that. Um, Dr. Figueroa, it has been a pleasure. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun. Care to close us out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanna thank you all for, for having me in this inaugural. <laughs> Uh, uh, fireside uh, chat series and uh, yeah I'm Dr. Ricky Figueroa I am uh, the director of the undergraduate program in motion picture science at the College of Art and Design in the School of Film and Animation and I am RIT faculty <laughs>